So the Battlefield 2042 reveal is now over. We're all really excited, but it's only just a few days until we see actual gameplay on the 13th, which I'm really looking forward to. But today, what I wanted to do was bring together some hidden details from the reveal trailer, as well as a bit of an added bonus worth of info that I found. The Battlefield website went live alongside the trailer, and it's revealed a lot more info about the world of 2042 that DICE has created. And considering we don't have a single player, I think it's good to know what's going on here. I've also got the super high quality version of the trailer, so hopefully when we pick these things out as we go through, you can see them in a bit more detail. If you do go on to enjoy the video today, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, and then drop a comment letting me know what you think about Battlefield 2042 so far. Starting things off, we have one of the first scenes from the trailer, several soldiers diving off that helipad to save themselves from that crashing Osprey. Now this to me is a very obvious reference to the Damavan Peak heli jump from Battlefield 3. That's an awesome moment that lots of fans will remember. But what interests me more is that the specialist we're seeing here with the wingsuit. Now specialists have replaced classes in 2042, but they fall under the old class categories like Assault Medic, Support Engineer and Recon. One of these specialists will have access to the wingsuit, whereas the other specialists won't have access to it, and instead they'll be equipped with the standard parachute. The wingsuit features a couple of times in the trailer. It does look highly controllable, and I think there will be a huge advantage to the specialist over using a parachute in terms of movement, but it's not likely you're going to be using the wingsuit every single time you jump from a certain height, so it's probably a very situational item. And then cutting back very quickly to our wingsuit soldier when they're standing on the helipad, they appear to be equipped with like a futuristic looking M4 carbine. In game, this will be called the M5A3. With 2042 being a near future title, there will be lots of evolutions of current weaponry that we know about today that will then feature in 2042. So expect more twists as we go through the trailer. Now you'll all have seen the robot doggo clip, he looks absolutely amazing and I will make it my quest to keep him alive for an entire match in 2042 when it launches. But the interesting part for me is that storage rack on the back. To me it kind of looks like a seat. It could just be the overall design of the robot but could you imagine riding your noble canine into battle? That could just be a reality. Who knows though? Nothing confirmed at this stage. It might just be a design that DICE went for. Then we get to see some vehicle action. These tanks are rolling across the Shipbreaker Yard on the discarded map. They look to be evolutions of the Abrams tank. They have a similar profile. Likely DICE will spin these into slightly more futuristic variations of that tank, equipped with more advanced weaponry for the time, but the clip does show some good tank versus tank battles, which I think we've all been missing from the last couple of games. We get to see a Levolution event here on the discarded map. Developers mentioned in the presentation that I got to see that there are several player controlled events on the 2042 maps. This looks like some sort of controlled explosion that takes out the side of the tanker ship. And then one of the soldiers that's running away from that falling chunk of metal is holding a Vector SMG or likely a new variant of it because we're in the future, but it's going to be called the K-30 in-game. As the ship blasts open, you can see another player underneath in this frame here holding a weapon that looks kind of like an AEK or maybe an AN-94, although it might just simply be an AK model of weapon. But the AEK was one of my favourite weapons in Battlefield 3, so to see that return would be awesome. The next scene is set on Manifest, which is a huge container yard map. It kind of just looks like a big Chungus version of Noshar Canals from Battlefield 3, but we get some close-up shots of the soldiers in their uniforms here. But if we freeze right here, you get a look at what appears to be the Remington 870 shotgun, or again, a futuristic variant of that gun. And then the soldier here, who I think is the Canadian specialist, Webster McKay, he is holding what looks like an AK-12. And you can see like a red dot sight or a reflex sight on top of the AK as well. And then there's a flashlight mounted on the side. Taking dog tags is back in 2042, a classic battlefield action. I'm hoping for a really extensive list of dog tags, similar to the amount that you could attain in Battlefield 3. I think there were several hundred available that you could unlock or collect from other players. But the soldier that's taking the tags may well be a specialist character. The name S. Espinosa is written on his chest. So perhaps a Hispanic expat who becomes a support option, judging by his outfit. The next scene really showcases the all-out war that Battlefield is known for, these ice formations on the map called Breakaway, which is set in Antarctica. 
we get to see a power sliding hovercraft followed by this really futuristic looking tank. This is called the Ripsaw. It's a real thing. It actually exists. But in 2042, it looks to be armed with a heavy machine gun on the front. It's got some lovely futuristic lighting on the front and back as well. And it looks to be able to reach some pretty high speeds, especially higher than what we're used to with some of the MBTs from previous Battlefield games. And of course, in this scene, the penguins are here. But I hear they're a little bit overpowered. So DICE, if you could uh, give those a quick nerf before the game comes out, that'd be great. A quick mention on the orbital map here, the massive rocket launch. Soldiers are scrambling to get away from the blast thrusters, but if you freeze right here, you can see some kind of transport chopper in the background. At the moment, the best guess from the community, this is the Russian MI-26. Then onto the hourglass map set in Doha, Qatar. It's set about 20 years after the World Cup has been hosted here. And in this image from the Battlefield website, you can see these shifting sands that have taken over the stadium that was built and then switching back to the trailer you can see that those sands are starting to push right into the neon city at the base of the skyscrapers the ah6 little bird and the ka52 attack chopper can be seen here again they might be futuristic versions of those we're just going to go with the names that we know for now they're in a battle between the buildings and the lighting just looks absolutely incredible I really can't wait to play this map. But then moving up to the roof after the big helicopter crash, the little bird goes on a massive kill streak, destroying the entire enemy team. But one cunning player takes the ATV, which is somehow up on the roof already, and then throws it into the heli, taking it down. You can see the name Polaris on the front of the ATV. That suggests that there might be some kind of fictional manufacturers in Battlefield 2042, similar to how Modern Warfare 2019 had companies like Syngard Arms and XRK who produced different weapon profiles. But actually going back to the beginning of this clip though, freezing it right here, you can see a soldier in the background that appears to be holding an RPK-16. Big shout out to Kieran Paul on Twitter for spotting that one. Then we move on to the dogfighting in the skies above the kaleidoscope map set in Korea. We get to see an F-35 jet being tailed by an Su-57. For me, this is just the best part of the trailer. Pulling off a Renderzook and taking out that enemy jet with a Carl Gustav launcher and then landing back on the side of the cockpit. That's an only in Battlefield moment and it's a real bit of fan service from the DICE team. Honestly, had the biggest smile on my face the first time I got to see this clip in the trailer. The Carl Gustav was last seen in Battlefield Bad Company 2 in the franchise where it had a somewhat controversial existence being completely overpowered for its entire lifespan, but kind of cool to see it back in 2042. Then we transition back down to the ground, some infantry action going on. Here we get to see a bunch of different specialist outfits moving past the camera and a few weapons as well. This soldier here is holding onto something that looks like a UMP submachine gun with a ranged optic on top of it. Also looks like the stock of this weapon is a lightweight one. And then in the sky above is an Apache attack chopper. In game, this will be referred to as the AH-64GX, so some kind of futuristic variant of the Apache. Then a few frames further on, you get to see the same UMP soldier, but we get a much better look at the gun. You can see a suppressor equipped as a muzzle, and then you can just about make out the number 9 there on the magazine. So potentially that references 9mm ammunition being used by this soldier. Now Battlefield 2042 does allow for different ammo types to be equipped onto weapons, so this might be our first look at something like that in action. The soldier is also equipped with a backpack and it's got this N logo on the back of it. I think that refers to non-patriated. That's the name given to these soldiers who've been displaced by climate change and their home nations collapsing. You can actually see that logo on a bunch of other stuff in the trailer on a couple of vehicles as well. The soldier also appears to have a radio beacon on their back, possibly a feature taken from Battlefield 5 where squad leaders would have radios on their back to make them very easily identifiable. Next, we have the lightning strike and the huge tornado. First of all, we get to see this soldier holding on to an AR-15 profile assault rifle. It's kind of hard to say which one this could actually be. Some people are stating it's the SIG 716i, but it appears to be run in a way with very little attachments on it, save for a suppressor that's on the end of the barrel. And then in the background, a second soldier appears to be holding a Desert Tech SRS bolt action rifle but it could be something completely different because half of the weapon is obscured, so that's just kind of a guess. 
The sniper scope on the top, however, does push me to think that this is a long range weapon. Maybe it's a marksman rifle, perhaps a semi automatic rifle. And then a few frames further on, this is a really cool detail. Here in the goggles of the soldier, you can see what appears to be the in game HUD for Battlefield 2042, but it's flipped around so that the player wearing the goggles can see them the right way. We're just looking at it the wrong way around. You can just about make out the mini map on the right hand side and then the ammo widget on the left hand side. I think that's a really cool touch. The tank on the right, these soldiers are standing next to, appears to be based on the Russian T-34 Armada. Big shout out to Flakfire for that little bit of information there. And we also get a glimpse at some kind of light transport vehicle in the background, and it's armed with a machine gun on top that will presumably be player controlled. And then cutting forward into the final tornado scene, we have this clip of a specialist holding what appears to be the KAC LAMG, a light assault machine gun. It's got a small holographic or reflex sight fixed to the top rail, and it has a large box magazine attached. It wouldn't surprise me if this specialist we're looking at is like a support focus one with that kind of weaponry and the outfit that they're wearing. And then a few frames further on, we've got this soldier here that's scrambling to their feet. They reveal what looks like a Scar H, a heavy assault rifle. Then as the tuk-tuk is dragged up into the tornado, we get another look at the UMP. This time, there's no suppressor attached. Some people think this has got like a short magazine on it, but actually, if you go forward a few frames, you'll see that it's just clipping through the soldier's leg, which is obviously unintentional. And you can see it is quite a, a long magazine. So again, it could be the nine millimeter. It could be, I mean, it, who knows? At the moment, we're not 100% sure, but this time the UMP doesn't have a suppressor on it. And then we get to my favorite Easter egg that's hidden in the trailer. First of all, this message on top of the tuk-tuk why walk when you can fly? Big lols. And then the phone number underneath. 1942 234 15 2042. That's a really nice little nod there from the DICE team to some of their previous work. So that's the trailer dissected. But there is more info that I wanted to include here. And that's some of the backstory to 2042 and how we got to this point. DICE has created a fictional near future scenario for the world that's heavily based on where the world might actually go with climate change and rising tensions. It all starts in 2031 with a decade of chaos, rising sea levels, collapsing economies and broken alliances. On October 9th, 2033, Hurricane Zeta hits land and it causes huge destruction and creates a humanitarian crisis. And it's classified as the world's first category six storm. Then on January 11th, 2034, that sees the start of the Second Great Depression with global food and fuel shortages. And then on August 8th, 2035, the entire European Union disbands following the collapse of the German state. Left behind, you have these displaced humans across the world and they band together in these ragtag fleets in search of safe harbor. Their families, their farmers, their doctors, engineers and soldiers. Some of them were once rich, others were already impoverished, but they're now all forced together and they call themselves the non-patriated or non-pats for sure. In 2037, humanity must adapt to the new normal. So there are revolutions in energy, desert irrigation, hydraulic levees and sea walls. They save coastal cities, they reclaim farmland and they rebuild the global supply chain. Hope of finding stability leads to some of the nations remaining reopening their borders. However, there are about 1.2 billion non-pats around the world and there's no process to give them a new home. Non-pats have become a permanent fixture of all economic, military and social policy making, but many no-pats don't trust governments that exiled them in the first place and shut their borders and they refuse to come back to normal. Leaders emerge and there's a huge movement around being unbound to a nationality and that rises up amongst the non-pats. Amid the world rebuilding, there is tension sparking between the United States and Russia. They are the two remaining superpowers and they're trying to take control of this new world. And then comes the blackout of 2040. A space debris storm creates a Kessler effect which causes around 70% of the world's orbiting satellites to malfunction and come crashing down to Earth. The blackout just causes massive devastation. 
planes crash, communication grids collapse, and an already jammed global supply chain comes to a complete standstill. Prices of oil, grain, and coal, they just skyrocket. And over 100,000 lives are lost in the incident. A world that's already on the brink is pushed over the edge. There's no internet, there's no navigation, there's no surveillance, there's no storm forecasts. Geopolitical distrust surges overnight. No one can spy on each other, so no one can trust each other. Both Russia and the United States claim the other is responsible for the blackout, while some people suspect no pats were behind it and accuse them of trying to sow anarchy. Former military and combat trained specialists among the NOPATs rise up into armed task forces to defend themselves as tensions rise. This brings the world to the brink of war. A food and fuel shortage ignites a shadow war between the United States and Russia. And to maintain plausible deniability, both sides field NOPAT task forces as proxies in escalating conflicts over resources, promising the refugees a piece of what's left when everything is over. In 2042, open war is imminent. No Pats have no choice but to choose a side, fighting not for a flag, but their own future. This narrative will be told all in multiplayer, by the way, through the live service, since there's no single player campaign in Battlefield 2042. DICE is going to be updating the live service quite often, and so far, four different seasons of content have been committed to in the first year. So there will be plenty of story to be told, along with new locations and new content. But that's it for now. That's my breakdown of the trailer and a bunch of extra information you might not have known. But I will be live streaming again on Sunday once that gameplay trailer launches and people get to see it. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on to catch more of that Battlefield 2042 content. But a big thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.